Welcome to the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. This is the ACC on ESPN. An early season terrific matchup in the ACC. Two teams in the top 20. Florida State on the road to take on Louisville. The KFC Young Center is rocking. We're just about set for basketball. Two terrific coaches going head-to-head -head today. Chris Mack, well, he's the all-time winningest coach in Xavier history, authoring a brand new portion of his career here at Louisville. He's got a top 10 team. And Leonard Hamilton, he's in there somewhere, the Florida State head coach. He's authoring a legendary career of his own. Could become a top five all-time winning coach in the ACC this season. Bob Schusen, Dick Vitale, Leonard Hamilton keeps it rolling, and both of these coaches know how to coach defense. Well, defense is certainly the key for them, and that's been the formula for Leonard Hamilton in him winning. You think about Florida State, they lead the conference, forced turnovers, they lead the conference in steals. They do an amazing job defensively, second and block shots. On the other side, you look at Louisville, and Louisville, 35.8% team shoot against them. Team defense, very effective. But who does a good job offensively is going to really leave here with a W. And how Florida State slows down Jordan Wara probably is going to tell the story. Well, Jordan Wara, they're 11 and 0 when he scores 15 or more points. Bottom line in their two losses, he was six for 26 against Texas Tech and Kentucky, and they came out with L's. But he's capable of scoring big time. He is an All-American. He's a superstar. Yeah, he can stick the little mini range jumper, step back, shoot the three. He's got to really be aggressive to the basket, try to get fouled a little more. But I'll tell you one thing, we're going to have an exciting ACC battle. It's going to be awesome, baby, Robert. Can't wait. Yeah, this place has been filling up for well over an hour. And Jordan Wara, a preseason first team All-American, the preseason ACC player of the year, and living up to that reputation, already leading the league in scoring at just over 20 points per game. 20.8 in their lineup. They're going to lineup change here. First game that they're deciding to start Kimball and Ryan McMahon will come off the bench, hoping that McMahon can give them some scoring off the bench. And right off the jump, we've got a foul call. Anthony Polite, who's getting the start in place of MJ Walker. Polite picks up the first foul of the game. MJ Walker has a bruised hit, missed the Georgia Tech game, went through warm-ups for Florida State. They think he's going to have a chance maybe to give them some minutes today, but we'll see. He's a key player. Part of their repertoire is their depth. They're usually a deep basketball team playing with us or without the big guy balls on. A lot of patience right here. Perimeter shooting, a little suspect now when you look at Louisville. Perry and Kimball are not great perimeter shooters. Nice pass, though. Terrific pass, Wayne Sutton. Down low to Stephen Enoch for the game's first basket. Well, Enoch gets that score inside. He's very productive for playing 20 minutes per game. His numbers would be unbelievable if he played 30 35. They rotate. I don't like Chris Mack. He's got people he can play. Malik Williams off the bench. Shot clock winding down for Florida State. Getting caught is Forrest. Fades away and comes up short. Forrest may go down in Florida State history as the winningest player to ever play at Florida State when the season's over. He's a winner. He does little things, all the little things that takes you to the winning circle. Darius Perry nearly turned it over. Got back his own Aaron Pass. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Wara wastes no time and knocks down a triple. That's a good sign for Louisville. That's a good sign. He's making shots early. And hey, they're going to play a little chip on their shoulders. They've been off for a week. Got beat by their rival Kentucky in an overtime game. So Florida State's going to get a real strong hit out of them. Unable to knock one down was Malik Osborne. Jordan Wara, by the way, with that last basket, puts his career points total at 1,001 points. So he goes over the 1,000-point mark on his first basket of the day. There's a block on the way to the basket by Raekwon Gray. They do a great job at that. That's second in the conference of block shots. Rotation over. Looked like he had an easy layup. I think Louisville has a tremendous team defense. They pack it in. They really communicate well. That's why they allow only 35%. Devin Vassell gets Florida State on the board. He's the guy that can shoot the ball for them.
Kimball skips one to war. Leaning in is Sutton, hit the underside of the backboard. He's a tenacious player, Sutton. He's got that Warriors mentality, plays so hard. Rainbow jumper in the mid-range for Perry, not there. Hustle play by Warren. Rolls one off, and now an over-the-back call is going to go against Enoch. We're going to take a look right here as the ball goes inside. Great entry, Enoch on the interior. And then we're going to see right here, Mr. Warren goes over a 1,000 on that. Nothing but Nyla. And then the block shot defensively, a strength of Florida State. Their defense has been their strength throughout the era of Leonard Hamilton. And that deflects the rotate a lot of bodies. That's why Walker becomes a key not being able to play. You can see Wara has been a scoring machine. Two decades of Louisville basketball. The last time that a player has scored as much as he has scored through the first 13 of the season. And there's an offensive rebound for Vassell. Vassell really good on the glass that time. He's a multi-talented athlete. Oh, great fake. Osborne great. able to bank it home. Wow, great fake right there. Tremendous footwork. Just did a great job on the interior. Florida State usually very physical team. They challenge it. Kimball wide open. Comes up short. That's a rebound pulled down by Malik Osborne. Set at the top of the show. Those two guys are not strong perimeter shooters. Good handlers, good defensive players. Got to make shots in out there. Florida State. Kimball on a run out. Didn't know Vassell was coming and almost gave it up. Nice pass. Enoch with the left hand comes up short. Kimball played for Phil Martelli at St. Joe's. Phil raves about him. Great basketball IQ, has great understanding of what's going on in the floor. See, they pack it in. They don't pressure you all over the court. Great long Gray turns it over. War the other way. He'll Euro step crossover and get tied up by the cell. And a foul called. So Jordan Wara will shoot free throws when we come back. Jordan Wara very aggressive to the basket after that steal. Louisville wearing the very plain uniforms. We'll explain why when we come back and how the champ influenced their look today. Speaking of amazing, the champ. Of course, Muhammad Ali. Louisville was home, and the uniforms that the Cardinals have on today, inspired by the simplistic trunks that Muhammad Ali always used to wear. They wore these uniforms once last season, wearing them again this year. Well, you know, I spoke at the Radio City at the ESPYs one year, and the champ was sitting in the front, and I said, champ, I loved it when you used to say, hey, if the crowd dares to boo, I'm going to finish you in two, sonny, and if you ever call me a bum, I'm going to knock your sorry butt out in one. He was the champ big time, and I know you're proud to know that his son, Assad, is doing a great job here at the University of Louisville in the production department. Speaking of doing a great job, Jordan Wara adds to his career total, well over 1,000 points now. and He averaged about seven points a game as a freshman, six points a game or so. Last year, 17 points a game, over 11 points improvement from his freshman year, which was the third highest improvement in the country, and he's scoring three points per game better than that this year. Wow. Let me tell you this, too, about Muhammad Ali. One last comment about him. Listen to Billy Crystal's unbelievable speech at his ceremony. I saw this the other day. It was unbelievable. We wondered if MJ Walker was going to get on the floor. Well, he's in the game now, off the bench, and he knocks down the baseline jumper. And he seems kind of quick the way he bounced up there. The shot going down makes you feel a little better as well. Gives you some adrenaline. They need him. He's a veteran player. He can make shots. They lost so much from last year's team. Three of the guys are in the NBA they lost. And six straight misses from the field for Louisville as Sutton comes up empty and then a foul call. You know, last year they lose Kevin Jelly. He's down there with the Clippers. They lose uh, Mann is also with the Clippers. And they lost uh, also the big guy, uh, Kamaji. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. The first ACC matchup of the new year for Duke. They'll take on Miami. The Canes have been formidable against Duke over the last eight years, winning five of their last ten. Here comes that full court pressure. Duke playing really well right about now, though. Kings are 93. Making threes, really a big plus. Lender told us before the game, we got guys that can shoot the ball. 
Back shot right there. Johnson able to kick it back up top. That three won't go for McMahon. Started running away before he shot that ball. Got to have balance. In and out from deep for Walker. It's a 9-2 Florida State run, though, to take the lead. Somebody's got to help out Warren in terms of scoring when you look at Louisville right now. Ryan McMahon tries again. That's off the mark. Struggling. The last three, four games has really struggled shooting. I don't believe he's getting into his rhythm and his balance that he normally does. How about the reverse move by MJ Walker? Off the bench. And he looks like Vinnie Johnson. He's the microwave. And he has given Florida State a four-point lead. Microwave, wow. I tell you, MJ Walker gives them a spark. I'll tell you one thing, when you play against Hamilton's the Hamilton's club, they're going to always play hard. They're going to play with emotion. You can see the intensity. And they're very physical. And they will roll bodies. You can see they've got three more players at the table set to come back in. You know, Ryan's really a great shooter. When he squares the body really well, see, he's drifted already off balance. That's why the shot's not going down. And he's starting to press a little, I think, mentally, rather than just relaxing, because he can shoot the ball. Great body control, good reverse layup. Protect the basketball, utilizing the net as well. I like the early start here you've seen out of this Florida State team. You got to be careful about turning the ball over. They forced. Close to 18 turnovers per game. David Johnson goes back door. Gets caught under the basket, but finds Wara, who's pinned by Osborne. He fits. Wara reverses. Plus the foul. Big time play. Big time play. That's an All-American. The team needs it. He stepped up big time. They wished he would have stepped up a little bit more against Kentucky, but right here. He wants the score here, man. Watch this. He's going to get the ball down inside. He's going to now miss the first one, gets back on it again, and we're going to see how tenacious he can be. He goes back to the goal. They challenge him. Great body control. Squares the body. Yubi Brown, great clinician, one of our colleagues at ESPN, used to teach that at the five-star camp as well as anyone, how to square your body on that drive on the baseline. Five-star camp, Honesdale, home of Howard Garfinkel, the super guard. A sell for three. He knocks it down off the feet from Raekwon Evans. Tell you one thing, Evans made the pass, but Vassell squared his body and shut that really with confidence. Here they come, they're gonna come after you all the way. Pressure, pressure, pressure. They take pride in their defense, forced to turn over. Well, Florida State has a specific way that they play for Leonard Hamilton. It's already showing up. Yep, there's a the little kick out, and Vassell squares his body. They really buy into his system, and that's the key. And right now, we don't see a good flow and a good rhythm out of Louisville. You'd have to think that's probably the way that they want it, though. One of three ACC teams with over 200 turnovers forced this season. I would think the sloppier the game looks, more of an advantage for FSU. Absolutely. Great analysis right there, Robert. Thanks. You can do both. <laughs> you play by play. I'm going to take off. No, you, you stick around. I like it when you're here. You liked it last night for dinner. We had a great dinner at Vincenzo's because I picked up the bill. See that? I, I'm going to send it to hey, Mickey Mouse and Disney should be paying for that, not me. <laughs> We're worth it. Uh, you are. We had a great time last night along with Adam, our director, and Kim, our producer. My beautiful bride, Lorraine, got to give her a plug, too. <laughs> she deserves more plugs than just one. <laughs> she paid the bill with me. <laughs> Laura leans in, gives it up. Johnson, a follow. It's good. Nice attack right there by Louisville. Johnson off the bench with a strong drive. It's a good Louisville basketball team. They've been well coached. They defend well. They rebound well, too. They got a plus eight. In terms of rebounds against their opponents, they got four guys out just seven or more. Pinned at the backboard and a rejection to follow by Patrick Williams as he guarded the rim twice. They think Patrick Williams is going to be a special type of dandy, and that's Florida State at its best. Blocking shots, scrapping, hustling. We got a good one. Call your friends up. Get on the two. ESPN 2. Bob O'Shusen, Dick Vitale back in Louisville. We threw a lot of different plugs out as we went to break. How about a plug 
Wow, look at the way you get that. Out of Louisville Slugger. Oh, that's, not, that that's not in your house? Wow, where'd you get that? That's incredible. We're very resourceful. Like By the way, while we were away, we saw some diaper dandies. These are real diaper dandies, man. Look at the beautiful diaper dandies. Future Louisville stars. Boy, Louisville's had some great stars here in this court. We talked to Denny Crum a little before the game. He had those national championship teams in 80 and 86. again on the ball again a turnover forced as Patrick Williams has been impressive so far the true freshman from Charlotte North Carolina a couple of blocks at the rim on the last possession and here he is going to the goal here but lost it I think he's gonna be quite a player going through the feeling out process Patrick Williams very physical he's got good touch Warren left alone can't leave him alone he came to play today he came to play. He's performing. And that's the reason they're leading. And he does well, the team does well. well. He's got 11 of their 15 already. That's pretty good. That's a sign of a real PTP. Walker thought about it. Osborne. He won't hesitate. He'll knock one down. I mean, they got different guys making threes. I mean, Osborne, Vassell. I mean, it's unbelievable. Walker. Everything they do is by committee when you think about this team. Defensively, rotate players, they communicate well, they love playing with each other. And that's all Leonard Hamilton, that's all coaching. He makes that happen. Nine to shoot. Kimball throws one down to the post. Malik Williams cross court. Leaning in, taking the bump back outside to Kimball. Oh, nice fake. Mid-range. Got it. Nice fake right there. Good basketball IQ right there. Good ball movement. Player movement, and Kimmel did a great job with the good ball fake. Squared his body exceptionally well and delivered. Another three knocked down from the corner. It's MJ Walker again. Chris Max, I say, I didn't know these guys can shoot the three that well. I mean, MJ Walker, they're feeling it right now. A hundred career threes for MJ Walker. He's got that great scorer's mentality. don't see many transition baskets they get back really well defensively with their athleticism when you look at Florida State David Johnson brings one out he did a great job with the driver they just didn't convert that was a poor job defensively by Florida State let him go right to the goal Williams for three in and out offensive rebound though pulled back by Malik Osborne fought for it oh, look at that Walker ends up with Warren we got bodies all over the deck in the backcourt as Warra goes down the lane. A floater. Rolls home. And the ball falling in. Oh, is it falling in for Warra today? We're going to step aside. There's an official's timeout to clean up the court. We'll return in 30 seconds. Back here at Louisville, a one-point game between Florida State and the Cardinals. Bob Wischusen, Dick Vitale, Osborne a little too strong. Malik Osborne gets his own miss and a new shot clock. As Polite slows it down. Polite's capable of scoring as well. His dad was a heck of a player. How about the drive by Forrest? Another try. And Trent Forrest reverses it home. He's the one guy they talk about as the consummate winner. They think he'll be the winningest player ever to wear a Florida State uniform when his career is over. You don't see him in a box score with a lot of points. He does whatever it takes, they say, to get us to the winner's circle. And Chris Mack is not happy with the defense he just saw at the rim. A wild card weekend starts with our game on ESPN and ABC today at 435 Eastern, 135 Pacific. Josh Allen and the 10 and 6 Bills take on Deshaun Watson and the AFC South champs, the Texans from NRG Stadium. Our coverage starts with postseason NFL countdown at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, both live on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. You know, Chris Mack loves going fishing. And right now he's trying to fish for some little ideas that can help his club right now defensively. Is there a much better team defensively than we've seen early in this game? FSU has four offensive rebounds, two of those four, though, on the last possession. And that got Chris Mack to call a timeout, and his team heard about it. Here comes that full court pressure. 
they really buy into it. Kids play 20, 25 minutes. Remember I asked them before the game, I said, the players don't get a little, you know, upset, not getting 35. So no, they buy into understand. For us to win, that's the way we got to play, Leonard Hamilton said. Got to rotate a lot of bodies, wear people down. You get some good athletes. This is Josh Nickelberry in the game for the first time, dribbling the shot clock down to five. He's, He's a long side. way away from the basket. Gives it up to Kimball. Kimball's going to have to hoist one from midcourt. That hit the backboard oh. and hit the rim. Wara for three. Yes! And Wara, he makes them pay. He is having an incredible day. He made them pay for that mistake right there, Florida State. Not getting that rebound. You never have a coach angrier at a team possession that resulted in a three than that possession for Mack, as it looked like there was a chance for life, dribbled the ball on the midcourt strike. And the ball knows because Florida State turns it over nonetheless. They want the, the effectiveness, the effectiveness of a timeout. That timeout, Chris Mack was all over his players, and it really worked. And I'll tell you this, Jordan Warren is playing like a flat-out superstar today. He is doing it all. He's a prime time performer. He's a warrior today. Yeah, not warrior. He's a warrior. Look at him. Oh, oh. All right, Brick, thanks very much. Well, Jordan Wara, he has thrown up anything but Brick so far. He's got 16 of his team's 22. Well, remember this stat we talked about on the top of the show. Whenever he scores 15 or more, Louisville is unbeaten. They're 11-0. So that number there could bring a smile to many Louisville fans. But don't count on it yet. There's a lot of hoops to be played. And we got a tie game. Team is shooting three for 16 other than the unbelievable start Wara's had. And Florida State shooting 50% from the field. Oh, this ball, ball movement sets up Wara. He's got another. Hey, somebody better tell Florida State Wara can play. Wide open. Are you kidding me? Come on. Leonard's kids got to recognize the guy's a great player. Anthony Polite has it stripped away. Here goes Wara with a one on one. Oh, nice He's pass. to Enoch running the floor. And Enoch will go to the free throw line after the steal at the other end by Lamar Kimball. Tell you one thing. Bottom line is the way he's shooting the ball, he should be a little selfish right there. But watch him dish the rock. He's gonna throw a little bounce pass, head up all the time for you young kids out there watching the game when you dribble. Don't look at the floor. You gotta look ahead. You gotta vision. You gotta know where your teammates are. He made a nice drop of a bounce pass to get his teammate on the free throw line. He's accounted for almost every point in terms of rebound, assists, scoring. Yeah, he's involved somehow. His stock is going up on this game. Enoch, who began his career at UConn. He's a good story as well. Didn't really concentrate on basketball until his sophomore year of high school. And then eventually became the Connecticut Gatorade Player of the Year and went to UConn. And now he's got a second part of his career happening here in Louisville. Fresh Kimball all over Polite. Yeah, you know, Walker for three. That's too strong. Darius Perry pulls it down. Darius Perry accelerates. That's off the side rim. Out of bounds off Florida State. They hit the hand of the lead down the wall. Since the timeout when they were down 22-19, and Chris Beck took charge in that timeout, showing why he's the winningest coach ever at Xavier, and why he's done a phenomenal job here. They're a different basketball team. 6.49 to go in the half, five-point lead for Louisville, and Jordan Wara will get a rest, so we'll see if Florida State can take advantage of however long Wara's on the bench. And where do the points come from for Louisville with Wara out? Well, Sutton could help them, that's sure. Perry, a wild miss. Osborne's got the rebound. Here come the Knowles. Long way to the corner. Trent Forrest thought about it. Polite thought about it as well. Now it's Vassell. Back to Polite. He will try a three, and he'll knock it down. Polite's dad was one heck of a player at Florida State, and he's been a steady player, Polite, throughout his career. Plays with a lot of patience and poise. Doesn't panic. These are two of the better teams in the ACC. This is not a vintage ACC from top to bottom, as we've seen over the years. 
good defense right there. The sell with a steal and the hit ahead to Forrest. He'll lean in and bank it hard. Tremendous two-man play. What a conversion after the steal. And that's one of their strengths. They average close to 10 steals per game to lead the conference in steals. As an example, the steal, the turnover, and the layup. Perry down the lane again. This time it's Sutton in the corner. Way short. Scramble for the loose ball, and here comes Trent Forrest. Well, their engine is on the sideline, and they were a different team, especially in this game, without one. Raquan Gray has it stripped away by Enoch. The hit ahead to Darius Perry. With the left hand, that won't go. Cleaning it up, though, on the offensive glass. Nice job by Fresh Kimball to be in the right place at the right time. Well, Kimball right there with the good loose ball on the offensive rebound is really a poor shot. Both balanced by Perry. Ball movement too polite. That's in and out. Enoch's got the rebound. That was right there, that shot. It was right there. Got to stop the basketball. Can't allow penetration. Nice look inside by Kimball. Kimball to try a three. Short. Oh, what a great look. Fouled. Saving it under your own basket sometimes can hurt you. And that will get Enoch to the line for Louisville. Well, they're doing their own hustler right there on the glass. Leonard and Hamilton, the last couple of possessions, cannot be happy with the job being done right here. Vassell saved it, and it ended up with Polite picking up his second foul. Florida State's turned it over seven times, and Louisville has 16 points off those seven turnovers. That's as good as you can do, points off turnovers. Wow. And Wara back in, along with McMahon. You know, Enoch's favorite player played for Kentucky, and if I really had to pick who was the best player in the decade this past decade, I gave five players my five best players in the decade, and I will tell you this, I did that, not numerically in order, and it was some right up ahead. How could he not pick Anthony Davis? You're a big Blue Nation fans. They go nuts if you don't pick one of their guys. Anthony Davis, would have, if I went in the order, would have been my number one player, and he happens to be the number one player to Mr. Enoch. He loves it. And I don't blame him. He's a great player, Anthony. Shuffling his feet, losing his footing, and turning it over was Patrick Williams. Oh, slip. Enoch to the bench. Malik Williams back in for Louisville. And you can see Wara back on the floor as well. True freshman, local product from right here in Louisville. David Johnson now runs the point for the Cardinals. Nice crossover. Very strong with the basketball. Kimball, just a little too strong. Got to make that little 12 foot shot. Wide open. Johnson found the open guy. The cell. In and out. Stay in front of him, man. Oh, great oh, offensive call for a hook. He said, wait a minute, I'm a star. I'm a star. I'm an STAR. You're not supposed to call out of me. They wouldn't call that on LeBron in the NBA. Come on now. You should be calling on me. I'm an All-American. All oh, the refs can explain why I called it. Think he's gonna think about it? Then think about it. <laughs> you think about a lot, like the decade of excellence with Dick Vitale as top five players when we all right, guys, thanks very much. Bob O'Shea's in here with Dick Vitale. Dick, both of these teams live off their defense, and both teams have shot the ball. Certainly war for Louisville and Florida State as a team relatively well here in the first half. They're shooting 48% Florida State here. And there's hook. another nice drive by Raekwon Evans. Yeah, Raekwon Evans. they got a bunch of guys with no names in terms of people, but they can play very deep. Raekwon Evans is a junior college transfer from North Idaho. He was the conference player of the year last year, and he's already contributing this year for Leonard Hamilton. Here's a guy you know well, McMahon giving it up to Kimball. Kimball right back to McMahon. Johnson in and out. 
Did a good job right there, Ryan, finding an open guy. He had a good ball reversal as well. MJ Walker attacks and oh. scores again. I'll tell you one thing, they needed MJ today. The word was he probably wasn't going to play because of a hip injury. They'd be in major trouble here without MJ. He's got 12 already here in the first half in double figures for the eighth time in the 11 games he's played. He's a veteran player. He's a guy that's been around. David Johnson leans in. Too strong. Looking for his own miss. He's got it. McMahon for three. That's off the mark to the left. And taps into the hands of Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams oh. goes right at McMahon. No foul call. Then he lost the ball. Defensive effort by McMahon was outstanding here. Looked like he dribbled it right off the foot of Raekwon Evans. Should have been a charge down here, I thought. Other than McMahon was right in front of him. Knocked him to the deck. Leonard Hamilton wants a timeout. Well, we talked about your all-decade team. Now, you said this was in no particular order, so that gave the impression you thought Zion Williamson yeah. was number one and A.D. was number two. And I got buried all the big, big blue nation. How could you pick Anthony Davis to, and was it in order? Relax a little bit. So what would the order be? Well, we, number one would be Anthony. He'd absolutely <laughs> there you go. Be, if I went that way. I like also the associated person. I really battle mentally between Trey Burke and Jalen Brunson. I gave it a Burke because I thought Burke didn't have the kind of personnel that Brunson had around with him. And I also thought that Burke, take, he took Michigan to the final game. He was a player of the year. And Buddy Hill, I love Buddy Hill. I think Kemba Walker, we all agree. I think Davis, we all agree. And Zion, the fans down there in New Orleans are getting a little ready because Zion is coming back. Yeah, watching our coverage last night. Uh, the pregame, at least, between the Pelicans and the Lakers, and he was put through a pretty fierce workout pregame and saw some highlights of that on ESPN last night. So it'll be fun when he finally is able to get on the floor as Walker steps back and connects again. A red hot first half for MJ Walker. You know, he's making like, I'll take it to the NBA level, the Clippers, Lou Williams off the bench, a square machine. I mean, he can start for anybody, but he likes coming off the bench. And Doc Rivers loves having him coming off just like Leonard loves right here, having MJ. Warren for three. That was a bad shot right there. It's tough to say a great player takes a bad shot. He was challenged big time on that shot. The cell fouled by Williams. So a four-point lead for Florida State. And you know what? A perfect opportunity now for you to talk about how we're continuing to try to raise money for the V Foundation. Well, one way is through a raffle. Right now, you people better jump on it if you want a chance to win that car and help children battle cancer. $100 per chance through the V Foundation. Just go to DickVitaleOnline.com. DickVitaleOnline.com and get your chance. The first car has already been sold out. We sell out 1,500 chances. By the way, mention cancer. I want to wish my best. To a great guy, Anthony Marino, his brother Vince, terrific people. Barry Rawson, one of the closest friends, a tremendous person. Called me yesterday, I spoke. He's battling cancer. He's in a hospital. I know he's watching. Big basketball fan. Anthony, we're praying for you, buddy. I promise tomorrow in church we'll have a candle and to say a prayer for you. God bless. Keep fighting and fighting and fighting. You got great people there. Barry Rawson is a great guy. Somebody should hire Barry back coaching. He's a terrific recruiter. Look at the inside, they had a mismatch and dumped it inside. Johnson skips one and ends up with Wara five to shoot. Reach in foul called on Bissell. So that will put Wara at the free throw line as that's team foul number seven on Florida State. So it's a one and one. And again tonight at eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. The first ACC matchup of the new year for number two Duke. They'll take on Miami. The Blue Devils are 20 and seven all time against the Canes, but the Canes over the last eight years have won five of 10 and it's never easy on the road in this league. Well, no, uh, you have come to play. You know, tonight we got two unbeaten teams right now in basketball. We have Auburn, they're on the road to Mississippi State. We have San Diego State unbeaten, they're on the road with a good Utah State team that beat Florida, beat the Gators. So I'm telling you, we may not, we may not have any unbeaten teams by the end of the night. Being ranked number one this season has been the kiss of death. Not sure if it's going to happen to Gonzaga, obviously playing in their league, not quite as deep and competitive as the other leagues that the teams who have been ranked number one will play in. But, boy, it, it seems like you get ranked number one, you lose. 
But the other day, Dodge Echo was down seven at the half to Portland on the road. Came back and won easily. Outscored about 20 in the second half. Osborne back to the basket. And he'll bring it back out with 13 to shoot. Forrest kicks one to a wide open Gray. Yes, from the corner again. Another guy. Great Evans. I mean, how many guys have made threes? It's unbelievable. They got a balanced attack. Made seven threes thus far in this first half. Shot clock turned off. Five and a half. Johnson. That's rejected. Sutton, the follow woke up. Protecting the rim once again for Florida State was Patrick Williams. Tell you, their defense, they block shots so well. They have such pride defensively, Robert, and that pride makes them get to the winner's circle so often. Well, the two best players for these respective teams played like it in the first half. Jordan Warren with 21, and off the bench, MJ Walker with 17. We've got a good one here at Louisville. Time for the halftime report. John, Chris, and Dallin in the studio. Welcome back to the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Just about set for the start of the second half between Florida State and Louisville. The Knowles have a seven point lead. Bob Schusen and Dick Vitale. And a really interesting first half. Louisville is known for their field goal percentage defense against the opposition. Number two in America coming into today, or number six rather. And yet Florida State shoots 55% in the first half. They're holding Louisville down. And MJ Walker, what a difference he's made. Off the bench. 17 points. Had a bad hip. They didn't think he was going to play. He didn't start. He's probably a starter. But he gave them a tremendous lift. And then we go inside the play. And we're going to show a little bit about patience, about penetration. And so it's going to show you how hard Florida State makes it. Due to get good shot, his penetration. They reverse the ball. Penetration again right here. You can see a little bit more penetration. Trying to get the gap. Zigzags the ball out. Goes down into the post. Now the post looks like he's got great position. They're going to dump it into the post. But he's going to kick it back out. And he's going to now penetrate. And then he's going to reverse the ball. Going to reverse the ball back out. There it is. Reverse it back out. And Kimmel, nice little ball fake. Steps up and makes the 15-foot jump shot. Patience led to points. Patience, poise, and points. The three P's. A Louisville shot 27% in the first half. No team has been held by FSU to worse than 28% this season. And that was against Florida in a big win for Florida State. This would be an equally big win on the road against Louisville if they could get it. Yeah, I did that Florida game. They played brilliantly down there. The Gators were so highly rated. It was early in the year. And Florida State came in there and really dominated that game. Laura lost it. Trent Forrest goes right at Fresh Kimball and lays it in. What a strong basket that was. He protected the ball so well. He sealed off the defense. Laura finally made a mistake. You know, they're not even in the game. And right now, they're still in the game, only down nine. But the bottom line is, Laura went four for five. The only guy to make a three. He made four of them. Kimball off the window. Nice little play by Kimball laying it on the glass. Not a strong perimeter shooter, but he understands how to play. Good basketball IQ, understands. Phil Martelli couldn't tell me enough of that. First of all, Phil Martelli got a raw deal at St. Joe's. Should be still coaching. A light for three. That's no good. Enoch. Short. Good shot of the jump hook right there by Enoch. Is the right shot. Sutton out to Warren. Yes. That's, that's a better shot. He's made five of them. He's made five of them. He's the reason they're only down four. This back row fired up, animated on that sideline. Crowd getting into it here at the Young. They are great fans, Cardinal fans. They love their Cardinals. Some of them standing up now. Florida State shot so well from the three to have that lead. And they contain him. Gray rejected by Enoch at the rim. But a takeaway by Polite at midcourt. He'll go in with the left hand. That's blocked by Enoch. Back outside to Forrest for three. Connects. 
I'll tell you one thing about Forrest. Enoch made two great defensive plays, and they come up empty, and Florida State gets the three points out of it. Two tremendous defensive stops inside. I mean, we got some defensive plays in this game that are unreal. Perry has it knocked out by Polite, and MJ Walker about to come back in for Florida State. How about Enoch protecting the rim? He says, thou shalt not enter thy lane. That's the first commandment against a big guy. Thou shalt not enter my lane. And Florida State's been answering that all year. They're second in the conference in block shots. Perry for three. That goes down. The big three, they needed that. The first down, they hit a three other than Flora. MJ Walker, short. Here comes Warren. Here comes Warren. That means trouble. That means trouble. Gave it up to a cutter and Sutton, and it was too hot to handle, and it's a Louisville turnover. Look at those numbers right here. He's got 24 already. Seven for 10, five for six from the three. And remember this, there are two L's. He was six for 26 against Texas Tech and Kentucky. In the Kentucky game, they hurt themselves big time at the charity strike. Nine for 20, and Kentucky goes 21 for 25, and it's an overtime game. Well, the five made threes already matches his career high, but a nice soft floater, Allen Houston style as Devin Vassell gets it to roll over the front of the rim. Well, that's a memory here. Alan Houston, I like that one, man. He was some kind of scoring whiz, not only with the Knicks, but Remember right that floater, here. Remember that floater against the Heat? Yep. It's one of the most famous shots in Knicks history. They don't have too many famous shots lately. Wow. Well, <laughs> they got a lot of famous bricks. They got a lot of famous bricks. Kimball is blocked, and it will stay with Louisville. Look at this right here. Great defense rotating over into your living room. Unbelievable. It's not easy to get a deuce here. I see Ryan McMahon coming in, and I feel he's going to hit a couple threes. I do feel it. He's too good. He's too good of a shooter to be shooting the way he shot here today early in this game. He's from right in your backyard. Yeah, I can't Sarasota. believe he's a senior. A throw away by Kimball. Forrest off the steal, attacks the rim, and lays it in. What a winner he is. He's exactly what Leonard Hamilton told us. When we need big plays, you look for Mr. Forrest. He can really play defensively. Fresh Kimball tied up. A held ball will keep it with Louisville. See, that's why. Right. attacked by Wayne Gray. That's why I hate this rule, both in the possession. They make a great defensive play and they get penalized. Speed, you want to see some speed? You're going to see some speed right here. Mr. Forrest, he turned it on. He looks like he'll be a running back. The new football coach I hear is terrific. Mike Norville, he should get him to play running back. Oh, dear. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ESPN and the ESPN app will bring you the first ECC matchup of the new year for number two Duke in Miami. The Blue Devils and the Kings. Down at Coral Gables, let's take a look at the ACC preseason poll, and this has already been shaken up. Yeah, you take a look at that right now. Certainly North Carolina losing Cole Anthony was a major, major loss. Virginia, by the way, is winning big right now over Virginia Tech. And we take a look right here. I think Florida State, North Carolina State got beat today. And I'll, I'll tell you, when I look right there, this is not a vintage top to bottom, which we're used to and accustomed to in the ACC. I mean, there's no way to cut that. Enoch leans in, tries to spin one off the glass to himself. And it's tracked down and saved in the corner very nicely by Raekwon Gray. They're always in an attack mode when you look at Florida State. The kids play the game the way coaches want it to play, play. They play hard, they play together, they share the ball. And they're so tough to prepare for because you don't know who's going to hurt you on that team. Every game is a different guy. Forrest does it again. Forrest really stepping up here. Really helping his club big time. Showing the winner he is. He's the only four-year senior on Leonard Hamilton's team. And remember, this is a 20-game conference schedule this year for the first time in ACC history. Enoch along the baseline with a drop step. Little power move down inside, down in the post. We don't get many post players anymore, but that's a typical low post power move. 
Yeah, 20 games, that's a lot of pressure playing those conference games. Also, a lot of money. Also, a lot of money, too, in the cash register. I watch this right here. Most big guys, look at his step. He's going to drop step. Look at the drop step. Great footwork goes to the goal strong. You know, we don't see a lot of post plays. With kids at a young age, at 6'10", 6'11", they try to emulate their stars. They want to emulate. They're not going to be as good as, but the Durants and all those big guys that play out on the perimeter. I mean, years ago, you were 6'9 and 10. You played on that low box. Foul calls. A moment ago, Dwayne Sutton was tagged. And now it's going to be David Johnson. Well, teams, at least from an analytics standpoint, they don't value the two-point basket. Unless you're going to dunk it or lay it in, the goal seems to be to get a three. Well, you know, the bottom line, what about the NBA? Talking about shooting threes, and they want to emulate a lot of those guys. That's all they do. I mean, you see 30, 40, 50 threes in the game. But to your point, it's guys like Embiid and Porzingis and Kevin Durant that shoot them as Absolutely. much as it is the James Harden's of the world. That's it. The kids are really, at the young age, with big size. They want to show to go inside and out. Good hands by Wara. He thought he knocked it off Raekwon Gray, but the officials say that it stays with FSU at eight to shoot. I think, you know, when you look at big men, the days of the shock, the days of those great big low post players, just tough to find, just tough to find. Walker gets caught in the corner, five to shoot. Oh, he carried it. And he did carry it. No question. He carried it. The one thing is, as good as Florida State has played, and they played well here, they really have. When you think about on the road, in this environment, playing Louisville after a week off, chip on their shoulder, they played well, and here they are, up eight. Bottom line is, they can't seem to get the knockout punch, though. They can't get that knockout punch against Louisville. Louisville's the kind of club that's going to hang and hang, and they're dangerous. Dominic Olinichuk is called for his first. Especially on this floor, they do so well. I was here for the Michigan game, and uh, they just played brilliantly against Michigan. I'll leave with that win. As Michigan came in real hot, had won in the Bahamas. Throws it into the backcourt. Johnson saves it, but can't find Warren. Wait, and it's another Louisville turnover. Enoch picked up his dribble, and that's a no-no. A little sloppy play right there. Chris not accustomed to that. He's such an intense competitor. He was the perfect hire for this program. He really was. Where would you put these two teams in the ACC right now, based on what you've seen so far? Well, you know, based on what you've seen, they're right up there. <laughs> they're going to be challenging. I think when you look at Duke, I wonder about Virginia's ability to score. Virginia, we know, is going to defend exceptionally well. Will they have enough scoring? Evans able to float one home. He's really been a big plus for them off the bench, Evans. Again, look at the body strength. they got two outstanding players coming in next year. Kid by the name of Scotty Barnes that they're really excited about. They think he is special for Mount Vernon Academy where they produce so many great players. Turnover. Sloppy. Held ball. And that will go to Florida State on the tie-up by Patrick Williams. They also got a great junior college kid coming in, Sadar Calhoun. Great junior college player from out of Virginia. An All-American in junior college. So Leonard, he, he lit up when he told us about his two recruits. Well, he said, I've got two pros oh, on the way. Yeah, he said, i got two pros. He likes the number of pros. He talked about, well, about Bacon and Beasley. And man, he's run a heck of a program. And I don't think a lot of people give him the kind of credit he deserves at a football school. He's come there and he's made basketball a positive force. MJ Walker can't hit. Osborne's follow wouldn't go. And here comes... Louisville the other way. Darius Perry into the lane. A reach-in foul call. Looks like that is going to go against Walker. Take a look right there. Look at that list. Look at that list in the conference. You got Mike, Dean, Roy Williams, got Gary Williams, Frank McGuire, and Mr. Hamilton. He's getting close to catching Mr. McGuire. There's no doubt he will catch him this year. He's going to be up there right there with all the Giants, the big names. And that's basically total wins in the ACC, not just conference wins. Second foul called on Malik Williams as they tag him with a charge. So 71 years old? 71. Does Leonard Hamilton look 71 years old no. to you? What, do I look 80? 
Come on. No, come on. I, if I had to ballpark you, I'd say 78 and a half. What? 78 and a half? Get out of here. Get out of here. That was a pretty good guess. I was a little, little, little Muhammad Ali on your little left right hook. I look about 45. I act about 12. The cell comes up short. Those were conference wins, by the way. That was strictly conference total. Oh, the little oh, Hamilton. Hamilton called on Williams. Oh, that's going to get tagged for fouling Raekwon Evans after Evans picked his pocket. Yeah, Evans did a great job defensively on McMahon right there. Four straight turnovers for Louisville. There it is. Look at this here. That's what they do really great. Forced turnovers, we said. They forced about 18 turnovers a game. I mean, it's unbelievable what they do. And that's certainly a big key. They lead the ACC in forced turnovers. Williams on the baseline. That's off the mark. Osborne's tip follow won't go. And now Wara draws a foul. Tim Wara's really playing his heart out. He is playing his heart out. He's doing all he can to try and take his team down winner's locker room. That's the second on Malik Osborne. As physical as this game has been, there is not a player in it for either team with more than two fouls. It's amazing. So the officials have really let these players play as right now there's not a guy that either team would have to sub out because of foul trouble. Malik Williams connects. He's capable of making shots. Malik's a good player to have come off the bench. And right there, only eight down. And Louisville will call a timeout with 12.05 to go in regulation time. But well, we're both basketball junkies, and if you're a basketball fan, talk about the tragic news of the passing of David Stern this week, a titan in our sport. Well, oh, David, what he's done is unbelievable. Innovator, he took the NBA globally, he did an amazing job, and a beautiful, beautiful humanitarian as well. Bob Oshusen, Dick Vitale, watching two of the best teams in the ACC, at least early on in the season, certainly appears that Florida State and Louisville will be in it for the league title, but they have dis different roster compositions. Florida State, they flipped their roster for Leonard Hamilton, whereas Chris Mack, he has a decent amount of experience to lead on. He's also brought in three grad transfers. Yeah, he's brought in some grad transfers to give him instant help. Uh, right now, he, both coaches do it really in a positive way, do it differently, but they do it in a positive way. Way. Leonard Hamilton said this morning that basically we're not where we should be and move us closer to where they want to be because of their experience. They're going to zone right now. Go to the zone. Let's see if the three-point shot comes up. It was big in the first half for Florida State. What's the adjustment for the Knowles as they're looking at this zone with 10 to shoot? Kind of trying to get into the gaps, but they're playing too much on the perimeter. I know it's Forrest out. spins and has it stripped away. Darius Perry comes up with the loose ball for Louisville. Good defense possession right there by Louisville. McMahon behind the back pass to the corner for Perry. Got it! Yeah, that's the play. McMahon to Perry with a showtime. I didn't see that when he played a part of the high school. That was a nice pass by Ron. He's going to get his J going. Foul called on Perry. The crowd doesn't like it. They're angry at John Gaffney for making the call. But Chris Mack is not angry at Gaffney. He's angry, uh, angry at Darius Perry for being dumb out near midcourt. Little steal right here, baby. And go up the court. Watch this. Around the back. A little showtime. Hey, and he delivers the big J. They're only down five. Leonard Hamilton's team has a five-point lead here at Louisville, and he had a chance to catch up with his old boss last night. 
as he was on the Kentucky staff during Joe B. Hall's tenure in Lexington and had a chance to meet up with his old boss. He said it was really great. Joe B. Hall, 91 years old. He's living in Louisville now. He lives with his son-in-law, Mike Summers, who uh, was a football coach. He's retired. He used to be an assistant coach here at Louisville. He's with him, and Joe was in good form last night, according to Leonard. Leonard did a great job for 12 years. He was really responsible in terms of recruiting guys like Sam Bowie, uh, Jim Masters. Oh, a nice play. So he got right in the gap in the zone, went right behind the two guys up on top, found the seam in that zone, and got the layup. And wish Joe nothing but the best, Joe. You did a great job at Kentucky, my friend. Nine points now for Devin Vassell. That jumper stretches the lead back up to seven. Seems every time they make a play, Vassell or Forrest make a big play. Harry can't answer. War of the offensive rebound. Lost it on the way up, but a foul call. And that will put Jordan War at the line. That's going to go against the freshman Patrick Williams. Can you imagine where they would be if Wara wasn't the superstar he is known to be here today? I mean, he's been absolutely brilliant. Rebound, he's got like six rebounds as well, I believe. He's got 24 points to go with those six rebounds. No other player for Louisville has scored more than seven in the game. Our line have normally a very good free throw shooting team. Shooting the 70s last year, they were brilliant on the line as well. This Mac really does a terrific job working in that area, and that's what cost them, though, big time against Kentucky, as we documented earlier. I mean, 9 for 20. You're not going to win in all the time. He has two misses there. You're down 7. But a 10 away, and he gets two anyway. He says, you know what? I don't make the free throw. I just go out and score in the interior. What a big play that was. Could have been a big turnaround there. You want to slide behind those two guys. Hassell, too strong. Overrunning the rebound was Patrick Williams. And here come the Cardinals, baby. They're tough at all. They're not going away. They're not going away. They really run up on McMahon's face. McMahon scoops. It won't go. It ends up with Laura. He'll attack the rim. Follow is good. What more can he do? Sensational. He's the three S man. He's like Darren Griffin. He's dominating here. Oh, they love it. Look at the Cardinal fans. They're standing up. There's joy. There's jubilation. But they said, you know what? We're still down three. The 28 for Jordan Wara equals his season high. And he is making effort plays when he can't get it done to the free throw line. Go get it on the offensive glass. Nobody blocked the bell. Look at this right here. Oh, comes up with the boost ball. That's the score right at us. Jordan Wara, N-W-O-R-A. Look at this. Watch this effort right here. Pounces on the loose ball, takes it at three guys, stays with it. Unbelievable. Terrific effort. Uncle Mo has arrived on the side of Louisville. Jordan Wara on the watch list for the Wooden Award, the Naismith Award, the Julius Irving Small Forward Award, the Oscar Robertson Award. You name the award, they're keeping their eyes on Jordan Wara this year because he might win it. He's got a chance. You know what? It's amazing at this time of the year, at this time of the year, you can't define who's the player of the year because there's so many just like the teams. There's no dominant team. There's no dominant one player. The nose handle adversity now, up by only three. He, he made a smart decision to turn into school as he was not charted very high. His stock is going up. Just like P.J. Washington, a Kentucky stock went up. Big shot from the corner by Devin Vassell. What did we talk about a little bit earlier? Whenever they need a basket, it seems they make that run, Louisville, and here comes Vassell or Forrest or Walker making big plays. Perry got caught in no man's land that ends up with Wara. Contested jumper is buried again. He's unconscious. Why not have Wara? Why not get him to him? Why not bring it to him? Why not him shooting? He is feeling it. Season high for Jordan Wara. He's got 30. 
Vassell leans in. Off the window for the sophomore. And there's Vassell again. Every time they need a big play, Mr. Vassell and Mr. Forrest. Devin Vassell was the only scholarship freshman on last year's team for Florida State because they had so many veteran players. Very tenacious is the best word to describe when you look at Florida State. Great tenacity. Williams. Off the side rim. Shot the ball too quickly there. She got more patience. You're down six. You're getting down to eight minute territory. You gotta take quality shots. Foul in the lane. They're gonna get Samuel Williamson for tying up Malik Osborne. Williamson's a guy they're really high on. They think he's got a tremendous future. Look at MJ Walker. He had a great first half, zero here in the second half. Hadn't even attempted a shot. No, hasn't, well, he hasn't played a whole lot of minutes either in the second half. He's a kid that had a hip injury coming in. Many didn't think he'd play this game. He was probable. Forrest, that's a kick. So the shot clock back up to 20. Forrest should have taken a little jump hook right in the lane there. McMahon will sit, and that'll bring... Fresh Kimball back in the game. Louisville out of fouls to give. Florida State still has a couple of fouls to give with eight minutes to go. Walker looking for his first bucket of wow. the second half wow. on his first field goal attempt, and it's a triple. Did we say he didn't score? Wow, he squares his body so well. Well, they got a nice team. I'll tell you what, Walker, Vassell, Forrest, they got some strong perimeter players. Seal inside by Enoch. Enoch, good post position on the interior. Take advantage, transfer. Marco Polo guy came from Connecticut. Forrest gets to the baseline. Banks it in. It's Mr. Forrest. I love those guys. Give me Vassell. Give me Forrest. I mean, they're warriors. They're guys that play the game hard. Play the game with passion. Forrest has 17, Walker's got 18, Vassell's got 14. So much more balance offensively for Florida State. They've got more answers for Louisville. It's been all Jordan Warren. Although Enoch, if he can use his size advantage inside, might get some bunnies. That time he lost it, and it will go to Florida State when we come back. That was a bad, bad pass. Telegraph that baby. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Energy on the go. It's amazing, Frank, that the higher you are ranked, the more of a kiss of death that seems to be so far this year. Well, we saw Ohio State basketball. get beat. We saw Oregon get beat recently. Hey, hey, let's right let's raise some money. I don't want to get beat here. We're helping kids battle cancer. Please get your chance on the car. $100, only 1,500 chances. Go to DickVitaleOnline.com. I beg you, we must help kids. Nothing worse than seeing a mom and dad have to put their child to rest. I spoke at a funeral about five months ago of a little guy named Clayton, and it Tears your heart apart. We need dollars. Please help. A hundred dollars you give, and you got a chance to win a beautiful red Mercedes convertible. Go to DickVitaleOnline.com now. Forrest to the rim draws a foul. He really can attack. He is in attack mode when he goes to the basket. He has a great way of protecting the basketball. Look at free throws, it's gonna be big now coming down the stretch. And they're a good free throw shooting team when you look at Florida State. Dwayne Sutton picks up his third. How about the FSU lineage for Trent Forrest? Remember Amp Lee? Yeah, his cousin, great you. running back back great in football. the late yeah. 80s, early 90s, ran for about 2,100 yards for Bobby Bowden and Sports Center tonight after Duke Miami with John Anderson and Michael Eaves. They'll have Titans Patriots post game reaction. Plus, which team poses the biggest challenge for Lamar Jackson in the divisional round? San Antonio Milwaukee highlights as well with Giannis of the Bucks looking for their fifth straight. Sports Center after college basketball on ESPN and the ESPN app. Lamar Jackson MVP, and they will be in the Super Bowl. Every playoff game is in Baltimore, and the Ravens will not lose at home. John Harbaugh's done a great job. What a story Lamar has become. 
A lot of people didn't think that he could play in the NFL. Forget about it. Perry with the shot clock at seven. Every possession becomes a big now to Louisville. Kimball rimmed out a line drive three. And Raekwon Gray's got the rebound. Florida State with a 10-point lead yeah, with six Kim minutes to go. That's like Kimball's strength shooting that three from out in the perimeter. Patience right now. They want to get into attack mode. If they see an opening, they're going to drive. Eight to shoot. Forrest. Five on the shot clock. Off to Gray. Three to put one up. Raquan Gray blocked by Sutton. Sutton shot clock violation. Sutton's been very quiet in the game. Sutton has not really been the kind of player they're accustomed to. Watch this drive right here. Look at it right there. Nice block shot. Louisville sits down Darius Perry again and puts Ryan McMahon back on the floor. McMahon is 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 3 from three-point land. So they're hoping at some point he's going to hit an impactful shot. And this lob way up over the head of Enoch. He's struggling, I can tell you right now. His facial expressions, I've watched him play throughout high school. He is struggling and thinking too much on the floor rather than just reacting and being in the rhythm and playing. Vassell, short, and that went over the corner of the backboard. Sun has zero points, zero points in this game. He's got four rebounds, but they got to get some point production out of him. He's got to help his buddy War, he normally does. Here is Sutton, giving it up to Enoch, trying to throw it down. And he was blocked from behind and fouled. Got to convert these free throws. Can't let this slip without some points on the board. Malik Osborne hit with his third. This would be a great road win if they can get out of here with a W on the road. I'm telling you, this is major. Well, this is a team that lost Terrence Mann, Chris Kumaji, Fiondo Kevin Gelly, even Phil Kofer when he stayed healthy. And he's in the G League right now. Throw in P.J. Savoy. Leonard Hamilton lost a ton of players off of last season's team. Did you think they were going to be this good this quickly this year? No, but I spoke to him before the season, and he told me we're going to be a lot better than what people think. And you know what? I'm going to go to him because he knows his people and he knows his players. And he's going close to history. When you could be in the top five in wins in the ACC in the history of the league, that to me is greatness. Forrest running one-hander is good again. The he's, largest lead for Florida State comes with four and a half minutes to go. He's big time. They have not lost on this four yet this year, right? Louisville? They had two losses, one at Kentucky and one at Madison Square Garden at Texas Tech. 11 and 0. Skip pass to Sutton. Finally, he rings the bell. Sutton finally gets on the board. Chris Mack calls a timeout. 4.18 to go. Does Louisville have a push in them in the last four minutes? We're about to find out. I'm back here at Louisville. Bob Oshusen, Dick Vitale down the stretch with 4.18 to go. And it's a 67 to 59 lead as Chris Mack just called the timeout to try and rally his troops. You know, at dinner last night, we kept saying it's going to be such an intense physical battle, and it's exactly been that. There's no doubt about it. These two teams really getting after each other, and there's no doubt to me, looking at them with the eye test, and I got one eye, but I'm looking at the eye test, this team and both clubs are going to be in the upper echelon of the ACC all year. Trying to go to full court trap. Some veteran guards here. The Louisville's number six in America in field goal percentage defense. And there's oh, a high percentage oh. heading from the rim from Malik Osborne. What a terrific.
good job in attacking the press. They attacked the press. They went diagonal to the cutter, throw the little lob up on top. Just perfect, efficient execution by the Knowles. Knowles are shooting 53% for the game. As Johnson comes up short, Osborne's got the rebound. They just have not gone away, Florida State. The little rush that Hoover made, they're not able to sustain it. And I credit a lot of those guards. When you look at Forrest, Vassell, and Walker, the three have been terrific. Walker, a deep three. Got it. Oh, that could be a dagger. That could be a dagger. Are you kidding? 13 down with three to go, three plus 18. Wow, what a big shot. He's been making them here today. MJ Walker, I'm telling you. Kimball, looks like he got bumped by Forrest. It was my second time having Florida State. I was impressed against certainly Florida, beating them on a road. There's the diagonal pass, the lob, the jam by Osborne. But I'm telling you, and then here's the straight J. Man, they have shot that well. Nothing but nylon MBN by Walker. But having watched them here today, Bob, they're better than they were earlier when they played against Florida. They are better. 21 points for Walker now on the inside. This is going to be one tough team to beat. Foul on Osborne, and that's the last foul to give for that would have been. Now the next game is against Danny Manning and company Wake Forest on Wednesday. They're lucky that Danny's not in uniform, though. That, that certainly would make things a little different. That's Osborne's fourth, so he'll go to the bench. It's a one and one for Enoch. Wake Forest had a good win today, beat Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh beat Florida State to start the season, opening game. Enoch misses the front end, wow. down by 13 with three minutes to go. Craziness college basketball again. Today, Georgia upsets Memphis. Next week, we got Georgia and Auburn. Heck of a game. Will Auburn be unbeaten? See Anthony Edwards, the terrific talent. Walker tries again. He's got oh, another. Wow. Is he feeling it? He looks like a pro today. He looks like a pro. He looks like a pro. 15 down. I would have never believed it. I thought we're going wire to wire here today. Kimball fades away. That gets a roll. Wara with a reverse. That's Wara on the glass. That's a bad shot there by Kimball. What balance. That will take a little time off that clock. I think they're in great shape, man. Up 13. You got a you got a hell of a scoop if they come back and win this game. There's a tackle, great tackle. Foul on Wara. Wow. Well, wow. speaking of football, speaking hey, of tackles. Hey. Wow, look at this Davy. Look at this Davy. I hate to say, couldn't they hear me in Baton Rouge? No, not uh, one person uh -oh, right now uh -oh. is listening to so Baton Rouge. Say whatever yeah, you want. We see all those picks by our people, our colleagues. I like Bill Walton's strategy. Look, yeah, Just like, pick what? the Tigers, you're he, fine. He, he, he talk about a politician, he picked the Tigers. Well, I'm going to tell you who I'm going to pick. They can't hear me in Baton Rouge, I was just told. And I love the job Coach Orgerman has done. It's an unbelievable. They're a terrific team. But Dabo hasn't lost the game in a couple years. And I love Mr. Lawrence. I think he is so good. So is Joe Burrow. It's going to be a great game. But the VBDI, man, the Vital Ball Dome Index by Ball Dome says, you ready for this? Here goes the Ball Dome. You want next prediction? Yeah. I'm going to go to the Ball Dome. Come on, Ball Dome. Tell me who's going to win it, Ball Dome. The Ball Dome says when it's all said and done, Clemson. 34, LSU 29. Remember this, the ball don't pick Clemson to beat the butt guys. You better listen. Dabble will not be doing Hey, watch this. I want to make a pass. Come on. Yeah, throw it out there. Show uh, me how to throw well. the ball. You got a little spot. I'm going to throw the referee a pass. Let him run it down and out. Let him run it down and out. I like your pick. Wow, what a big win for 
Florida State. Yeah, what is a win for a team like this? They're still looking to replace all that from last season due for a young group to come into this atmosphere and perform the way they have. To have a better look and feel for what kind of team he has, he told us we could shoot the ball. I wasn't convinced of that. You know what? I'm totally convinced of it now. They definitely could stroke the ball, and they have different guys. You can't just concentrate on one guy. Oh, that's a tough pass, tough pass. Now the tobacco roll, man. You better be really cautious when the nose come to town. That's all of you down there. That's a school called D-U-K-E, a school called U-N-C, N-C State. I'm telling you, Leonard Hamilton, he's going up the charts on the all-time list, Mr. Washu's in. I run it down now. I really have, I feel like passing this football. Come on, man. Get me on camera. I want to show people I used to be a QB. Man, I used to be a QB. You were a QB? Uh, I just, uh, look at that. Man. Oh, ref, uh, Do you want the QB. option? I went to QB in my living room and I used to make believe I was playing. I wanted to be like a fan target to the roll out. I wanted to be like a guy you didn't know, my idol, Y.A. Tittle with the ball dome, way before your time. Oh, uh, yeah. I got one eye, I can only see one receiver. So if the receiver moaned at me, I'd say, hey, I couldn't see him, what can I tell you? <laughs> Gotta have a little fun in life. Hey, Louisville fans, don't get really down. They're gonna be back. They lost two in a row, but they will be back. They're too talented, too well coached. A bunch of tough kids. We didn't see the real Ryan McMahon. We didn't see the real Sutton. I mean, we saw certainly Warren play brilliantly. Oh, yeah. The man got pushed, got knocked to the deck. <laughs> They're gonna call that against Raekwon Gray. We got number seven, number 18. We got so many top 10 teams. They talked about it in the studio. I mean, you got Oregon went down this week. You got Ohio State went down. You got Louisville going down. So, you know, voting, which I'm a member of the AP poll, it's just crazy. Every week is craziness. Where do you think Florida State goes based on this win? I'll go top 10 in my estimation. Top 10. I want a foul here. Oh, wow, what a great win. Leonard, look at the bench. Look at the jubilation. Look at the happiness. The no fans behind the bench are excited as well. Just a great, great job. Last Turn season, up. Florida State beat Louisville in an overtime game we called, which was a big win for the Knowles. And their last trip a couple of years ago here to Louisville, they won as well. So of late, they have had Louisville's number. First time, I think, maybe in their history to beat them two in a row. And that goes back to the Metro Conference days when he's there playing the Metro Conference, both these teams. They won two in a row. A lot of smiles from the Seminoles, a lot of sadness. And the history Cardinal of this fans. series, Florida State's never won two in a row at Louisville until these last two meetings. Oh, absolutely. And this is a real momentum-building win for a program still trying to find their way. Absolutely. What he's done with that program, I said it once and I'll say it again. He has never gotten the kind of national recognition for what he's done in a solid job in taking a football school and making it really such a success in basketball. Very impressive win for Florida State. For Dick Vitale and our crew, I'm Bob Oshusen. Coming up next, it's Notre Dame and Syracuse. Right now, back to the studio.